Right, I messed up. I got the wrong belt for this. And now I'm going to have a go at fitting a good belt for it. So this, I think, is my third attempt at changing the belt on this unit. I haven't really planned to do this video tonight, but uh, it's Saturday night, it's 9pm, so I haven't got any decent daylight. And uh, there's nothing on TV, and I've watched everything on YouTube that I'm interested in. So I thought I'd better make a YouTube video instead. And the first attempt I made at uh, getting the belt replaced on this, um, it was so difficult, I didn't really know what I was doing. And although I followed another video on YouTube, I was... Um, Getting my fingers in the way of the camera like I am now, it's really hard to do these big belt replacements, especially shooting round round a, a phone that I'm using to record it. There's another YouTuber who's done a belt replacement on this, and his video is so much more professional than mine. But oops, if you want to see how a novice re belt replacer does it, you're watching the right channel. So yeah, the first time I replaced the belt on this, I'd ordered a cheap pack of belts for the uh, tape counter, which is this, and also the flat belt for the um, for the tape mech as well. And just a note, if you're doing this, I think these screws are um, different sizes. So I've gone about this all around the wrong way. I've taken the bottom right one out first, and I'm going to put that in the first tray. And then that one, and then that one, and that one. Because when I put it back together, I couldn't remember which screws went where, so I had to be really careful. Um, anyway, I bought the flat belts, a pack of flat belts from eBay as well. Not from eBay, from um, Amazon. And the flat belts were absolutely terrible. They were uniform, they were they had little sort of bumps on the flat surface. They had nicks out of the side of them. And I sent them back. I mean, it was so bad. It was five quid's worth of belts. Let's put these in a different order. I think it was 50 belts in there, and I sent them back. I wouldn't normally, but they were so awful. And they were advertised as belts for cassette decks and stuff, and Walkmans. And they were nowhere near good enough. So, anyway, so that's, that's the cassette mech taken out. Now, there's two bits of, you can just see one down on the bottom left here. That connector has to come off, and this one on the top. Oh, and the um, tape counter there. Now, the belt I got for the tape counter has actually worked quite well. Be careful on this, there we go. Yeah, that one has worked quite well. Even though it was a cheap one, they're, they're square ones. So I've got a multi-pack of those. I'll put links in the description, so if you do want to buy belts like a multi-pack, you know which ones I was reasonably happy with. And the other belt I got, I'm not going to give you the name of the company that did it, but I went online and did some research, and um, Tapeheads is a good resource for this. It's an old-style website, but they've got people who really know what they're talking about, and I've got a complete new set of belts, so I won't need this one, which is the one from the um, uh, multi-belt pack I got from Amazon, because these two are from this supplier, and I'll put the supplier in the link in the description if it works out all right. So, now, we've got to take... Oh, it's a bit caught up there, isn't it? So, shall I give myself a bit of space on my desk? I think I probably will, especially because my lighting is not very good. And it'll be a bit more comfortable. So I'll be right back. That's better. So, if you're a decent YouTuber... Um, but not perhaps a big channel, but a decent small channel, and you know of some good battery-operated lights that would be good for this sort of close-up work, then let me know. I've got this, which is a mains-powered light, but when this runs, this runs at 50 hertz, because I'm in the UK, and the camera is recording at 30 frames a second, so you get that sort of shimmering wave-like effect on it. So I don't like to use it very often, because it's quite annoying on the videos. If you've got some, some lights around maybe 30 or 40 quid for some lights that you know of, which are really good battery operated ones, so I don't have to worry about the mains, then let me know. So, the two screws that I've just taken out are for the motor mount. 
So this was tricky getting out the first time I did it and none of that footage was any good for my video. It was just completely useless, didn't know what I was doing. So this mount here goes down into this slot here and also on that slot there. So it sort of lifts up. It's quite tricky to do. But get hold of the metal there and pull it up and this bit on the side and hopefully it won't fly off. There we go. So you sort of got to angle it up this way. And then that mount can... There is the pulley that the belt goes on. So we can take that off there, set that aside, and then take it off. This is a big metal flywheel, this. But even so, this belt I got was so rubbish that uh, it wasn't... Uh, I could hear the wow and flutter. When I was playing the tape. So. I haven't quite figured out how to get it out of here. That's the best I can do. So that belt is no good. Right then, where's my other belt? Okay, um, so what I've done off camera is I've cleaned this flywheel with um, some IPA on a cotton bud and I've cleaned this um, pulley here with an IPA on the cotton bud as well and to be honest they're actually quite dirty so I'm glad I've taken the time to do that um, and I'm also going to do uh, this motor pulley here Let's see if I can zoom in on that because that's a bit dirty as well so I might as well clean that up so same old story a bit of IPA in the lid Plenty on, on the cotton bud. Just give that a good clean. Last time I cleaned it, I cleaned it with the motor running and that was a lot easier. Now, despite the fact I'm giving this a good clean, not much is coming off of it. So I guess it's good the white plastic has just been stained over the years by the dirt or the rubber. So I'm not too worried about that, so long as it's a... Uh, now I've got, I've got a little bit off, Let's just make it nice and dry. So now I've just got to put the new belt on. And the way I've found to do this before, it's got to sit in this little track here and I didn't know how to get it under this circuit board. So I just figured out that if I just tuck it under a little bit and then hold it in this track, I could somehow just Pull, pull the belt around and have it uh, stay in the little hole there, but it doesn't want to do it, so... There we go, I'm not sure how much of that you would have got with my hands in the way. It's actually gone under there, isn't it? Let's hook that out. in there. No, it's still underneath. So what's going on here? Now, I don't know whether you can hear that. So something's not right. Let me have a look and see what's going on. Yeah, so what it was, it's this, this was resting on the uh, desk and something was clicking as I was pulling the uh, motor around, pulling the band around rather. Okay, so now what I've got to do is fit this back on here. And there's a little trick to doing this. First of all, getting it the right way up is a good idea. 
and the belt has to go round this pulley. So I don't know how I can do that. I, well, I do know how I can do that, but it was a bit fiddly, so I'm going to try and do it a slightly easier way. But I might be getting my fingers in the way of the shot. Oh, sorry about that. So I might be getting my fingers in the way of the shot. But I've got to get that belt, which has almost fallen off, I've got to hook that down on that white pulley there. And what I used last time was a paper clip. The other guy who did the video on this made it look so easy. Now there's got to be another way of doing this. Okay, so I'm going for method two here. Without the um, motor bracket on, I've now got to hook this pulley, this uh, belt. It seems really... oh, it's come off, that's why. Ah, so maybe this is the way to do it. Okay, this is another reason I like doing videos, because I learn stuff. Every one I do, I'm improving my technique. So this, this belt has got to go around this pulley, which it is. It's got to go around this flywheel and around this, which is the other side of the motor. Mm. And I did it last time by using a bent-up paper clip to hook it on once it was in place. What I'm thinking of doing now is getting it around this white pulley first, or second, it's around the black pulley, get it around the white pulley next, and then hook it on the flywheel. Let's see if that works. Right, so, I don't know if you can see this, it's on, around the black pulley, but it's also around the white pulley there, and I'm holding it with a little bit of tension. And then hopefully I can get this motor mount back on. That's about right. And see if there's, a, there's actually a twist there. Yeah, there we go. So now it's on three pulleys, but I've got to make sure it doesn't come off the flywheel, which it's trying to do. Now, how am I going to do this? I think that's on. Looks like it's on. All right, let's uh, grab my screw screws, which are attached to my screwdriver bit. Put the screws back in the motor mount. Believe me, compared to the first video I shot on this, this is making it look easy. I just completely abandoned the other one. The, the footage wasn't worth putting up on YouTube. Even I have some standards. Right, so let's get my deck back. Okay, time to put all this back in. So the tape counter belt goes around the little groove just here. Just that one there. And the lesson I've learned from getting these cheap belts from eBay, and it wasn't eBay, it was Amazon. The lesson I've learned for that is don't bother. Source good belts from people who know what they're talking about and splash out and buy the better belts. Let's get my cables out of the way. 
I have already cleaned the heads on this, so I don't need to do those again, and the capstone and the pinch roller. There we go, so that slots back in now. That can then go across there to there. Can you see that? No, it's just off camera. So that's for the tape counter. That feels actually quite a bit stiff, stiffer than the uh, the other belt I had in there. Something's not quite in there, right? Something's stuck here. Okay, so what's stuck is the heads have been moved into the play position and it's getting caught on this here. So I've got to spin the flywheel so those heads move back out of position. Do you see that? They moved in position and I've got to spin that so they're out of position. And I've got to hook on the belt again for the uh, tape counter. Put that under tension, tension so it doesn't pop off and this should now slide quite easily back into there. There we go, so that's now in the right position. Put the tape counter belt in position and then get my screws. Now then, do you remember which way around these were? If you put them in, in reverse order again. I'm going to put a link to this iFixit toolkit in the in the description box as well because it really is a nice piece of kit to be able to use. Magnetic bit holder, a spinning bit on the end. It's only a plastic. Um, this part's plastic. They do do a metal one. I think it's aluminium, but you don't really need it. This is perfectly good for what we need for this type of repair anyway. And. Uh, so there'll be a, a link for it on Amazon. So if you fancy treating yourself, then you can do so. And of course, if you buy from the affiliate links that I've put up, then a very you pay the same price as you would otherwise, and a very small commission comes back to me. And I'm yet to reach the threshold after about six months or so. I'm yet to reach the threshold of fifty pounds where they actually make a payout. I know a few of my business customers buy laptops from Amazon, and it still hasn't made the fifty pounds. But every payment I get from them is money I can spend back on the channel to buy mini discs or cassettes or new bits of equipment to tinker around with. Right, so that, fingers crossed, is all in there. The door shuts. The cables go back in. Can you see that? So it's just on there. Be careful I don't bend the pins or anything. Right, that's it. So let's get this situated um, back where it's going to be staying for a little while and we'll give it a test. Okay, so this is the unit I've just been working on and this is a, another unit. I bought both at a boot sale. That was a tenner. That was five. Um, that one actually works apart from the counter but doesn't sound as good. This one sounds good, um, but did need uh, the belt replaced um, because it wasn't turning, it wasn't starting properly without a little bit of a flick of the flywheel. So I've actually got, got around to making myself a demo tape, which is copyright free music. So I'm using my Denon shelf system as an amplifier. And let's see if this is working now. Turn up. Sounds all right to me. Now there's no. I'm. I'm not going to try and get the uh, audio 
from here directly into YouTube. There's not a lot of point because it'll only get compressed anyway. Oh, that sounds like it's running really slow. And it doesn't sound like a steady a steady sound either. So I'm going to forward it for a little while and see if this frees it up a little bit. It actually sounded better than that when I had the other belt on it, when I had the original belt on it. The counter's working. So it's got automatic music search on it. So I'm just trying to find out whether it's, there's a lot of wow and flutter. If it's just running slow, I can adjust the speed. Now that sounds slower than the previous track. So I'm going to run the tape all the way to the end and all the way back to the beginning. And then I'm going to try and look for the um, screw that I can adjust to adjust the speed. And how I've done this, I'm also going to put, I've got a tape with a 3000 hertz, a three kilohertz tone on it, which is really annoying if you listen to it. So I might do that first. Let me, re, let me take this all the way to the front of the tape then all the way back to the beginning of the tape and then I'll be back uh, to shoot another bit of video. So while that's rewinding, I'll give you a little demo of this Aurex Toshiba PC-G2. Actually while this is rewinding I can hear it going faster and slower. As if something's rubbing. I might have to take the pieces again. So let's have a look at this one first though. because I love the VU meters on this. It's not plugged into an amp at the moment. You might be able to hear that straining. Yeah, so definitely like the look of this one, but this sounds a bit muddy and a bit uh, muffled. I don't know why and I haven't got the energy to to fix it up before it goes on eBay. Now this one I can hear is having trouble turning the tape now so maybe that belt is rubbing somewhere. Yep, it's run out of puff so I don't know what's going on there. So actually the tape is quite hard to move. I wonder if the problem could be the tape. Yeah, this tape is, is quite hard to move. So it could be a problem with the tape. Okay, let's put my three kilohertz tape in. Now this is gonna be really annoying to listen to, but uh, so you might want to not listen to this part, but we'll see if we can hear uh, any variances in the tone of the tape. I'll 
अच्छा नहीं आप लोगों में Now the tape is getting slightly louder and quieter. Let's turn it down. But that's because it's put onto um, Rick, uh, what is it? FixYourAudio.com is who supplied this. But what they've done is they've put it on a really manky old tape with tram lines and everything on it. So this is really only good for testing the frequency. And I don't have any way of seeing whether it's running at the right frequency. But it does give us an example. If we can hear the tape, the pitch of the sound going up and down with our ears, then we know that the cassette deck has got wow or perhaps flutter on it. Did I put them backwards? I think I did. No, that's it. I should have turned it down. Okay, if you know of any software that will allow me to test to see whether that is in its uh, in the right frequency, software for an Android phone. I tried a piece of software for Windows, which I no longer have that laptop anymore, and uh, it was not very good. So what I've done is I've taken off the band for the tape counter in case that's what's slowing it down. So I'm going to put it back on again. No, it sounds the same to me. I wonder whether it's that tape. So I'm going to play a tape that I recorded. It's actually the same same brand of tape, I think. No, it's a different brand of tape. And that's much easier to pull through, so maybe it's the tape that's broken. But I won't be able to play any audio for this, so I'm just going to... I'll have to mute the sound on the video, but I'm going to listen to it with my ears and see whether it is um, any better quality. Now these are uh, uh, tracks that I know quite well and I know that's running slow but it doesn't sound too bad and I'm, I'm pretty sure that when it had the older belt on it was running at the right speed so whether the belt that was on it was incorrect I don't know um, but this belt apparently is the right one for this deck and this manufacturer sells belts for other decks still on Amazon, so that's why I'm going to put a link in. So even if it's not the deck that you need, you might still use this supplier for belts. Right, so I've had the whole lot apart again, just to make sure I've not done anything stupid. When you put it back together, make sure these wires are tucked away, and these wires are over to the left-hand side, because there they could be fouling the... Uh, band on the, the uh, belt on the flywheel. That wasn't the case. Uh, I had everything put back together, but it's just running slow, whereas it was running fine on the other belt. Now, the other belt was, I think, supposed to be four millimeters, and the correct belt is 4.7 millimeters. So I don't know why that would affect the speed, but I've already tried to adjust the speed and it does work. Now, I can't really do that on video because. Um, I need uh, a track that I'm familiar with and I need a track that I've got on cassette and what I'll do is I'll play the track on the cassette in headphones on one ear and I'll play the same track streaming in this case from my phone in the other ear and then I'll twist the adjustment um, uh, screw which is in the motor and in this case it's this one here which is quite hard to get to actually um, but and you also need the very smallest bit from the screwdriver set from my fix it that I link to in the it's a flathead bit. It's the uh, one I'll link to in the description box. 
and it goes in this hole here which has got a little rubber bit inside it and it has to go quite a way down but you'll feel when it stops and hopefully engages in the um, in the screw head that's in there there we go so anyway I, I will do that off camera because I can't have the music um, because it will be a copyright strike make sure you've got the tape counter belt back on as well otherwise the speed might be out now the problem with using this method for um, speed calibration is it relies on the tape that I've recorded with the uh, track that I am familiar with it relies on that being recorded at the right speed now all of my cassettes are recorded on my Pioneer shelf system so it doesn't matter for the moment uh, but if they're recorded on that one and I haven't been able to calibrate the speed on that one then it might be fast or slow so when I calibrate this deck to the speed of the tape which is recorded on the Pioneer deck it will only be correct based on the speed of the Pioneer deck being correct which might not be true so I do have the 3000 kilohertz tape but I don't have any software which will help me use it to figure out whether this deck is running at the right speed so if you know of any software for Android or for um, iOS for Apple there's some software I downloaded for Windows 10 but it wasn't very good so if you know it for a mobile device that I can install on the phone and then play a 3 kilohertz tone through it and then it will tell me whether the um, speed is correct then please comment with that down in the um, comments box and if I use it and it's uh, a good enough uh, good enough piece of software then I'll pin that comment to the top so uh, if you're looking for that particular type of software for your Android or Apple phone then all you've got to do is look at the top comment and that, or the, one of the top few comments it will be there so for now I think we'll call that a fix and uh, thanks for watching it's a break from the normal mini disc stuff and occasional walkman stuff it's been hard work doing this but it is my first one so if you've got any comments um, please do so in the uh, comments box thanks a lot see you in the next video